Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars and welcome to another top 10 list. Today's top 10 list is my top 10 favourite films from the 1980s. Right, um, for those of you that follow the channel and watch my top 10 list, you will know that before Christmas I did a top 10 favourite films from the 1970s and I mentioned in that video that what I was going to attempt to do in the coming weeks stroke months was to do a series of top 10 lists that list my favourite top 10 films from those decades. So we've got 70s, 80s, 90s, noughties and beyond. Um, I consistently get asked by people what is my favourite film of all time and I, I really struggle to answer, I really do. So I am attempting to go through this process myself and by process of elimination try and get my top movies from each decade and put them in a list, my favourite films of all time. And I'm not sure if I'll be able to list them films um, in order or just put them on a list and say these are my top 10 favourite films of all time. Um, so what I'm going to do, what I did on my last 70s video and this video is it'll be a, my top 10 favourite films of the 1980s. The top two will then move on um, into the final video that I do, my top 10 favourite films of all times. Out of all time so I hope that makes sense we shall get on with the list so needless to say there are some honorable mentions I'll be honest um, I always knew the 1980s list was probably going to be the hardest because it was the decade I really grew up in um, and it really really was very very difficult to whittle this list down to 10 um, so I could have I could have easily done a top 20 top 30 list here but the three honorable mentions I want to talk about the first one is Midnight Run um, the film with Robert De Niro, Charles Grodin, directed by Martin Brest. Uh, probably the first Robert De Niro film I ever saw. Loved it, I, I, and I still love it today. It's an absolutely fantastic film. Uh, Robert De Niro plays the bounty hunter taking Charles Grodin cross country. Um, it's funny, it's got great action in it, and it is a really, really good film, and I love it. Crocodile Dundee, what can you say about this? I went to the cinema to see this when it was first released. Um, it's just you look at it and watch it and you just think 1980s it's such a brilliantly put together film uh, I do enjoy the second one not a huge keen fan of the third one but it is watchable and the third film I want to mention is one of my favorite comedies of all time Arthur the Dudley Moore film um, that was is just side achingly funny uh, it is that good but it's got a real heart at the centre of it some real emotion too it's great performances but at the very core of it it's a, just a damn funny film and easily one of the best films certainly in the 80s but in my opinion of all time too right so here we go at number 10 Aliens um, and it's a testament to this list really when you've got a film like Aliens at number 10 um, I think the best Aliens film. Um, pure Horror is the first Aliens. The second one, Alien. Uh, the first one, Alien, was Pure Horror. This one is action packed. Uh, James Cameron went, screw it, we're going to do action. And it worked at the same time. It's really, really scary too. Um, I, I've, I've got memories of watching it for the first time, being really, really scared and exhilarated at the same time. Fantastic, strong female lead. Sigourney Weaver was awesome. Um, it's just a wonderful film. Coming in at number nine, we have Die Hard. Uh, one of the greatest action films of all time. Uh, put Bruce Willis, Bruce Willis firmly on the map. It's been debated for decades whether it's a Christmas film. Who cares? It's just a bloody good action film. Uh, I watched this again recently. We went to um, a drive-in showing of this at my in Halifax, where I live. There's like a they do like drive-ins now every couple of weeks, um, and it was brilliant to rewatch it on a big screen with my family. My son had never seen it. Um, my wife had been years since she had seen it. We all really, really enjoyed it. A great, great action film. Uh, what is there not to enjoy with Die Hard? Coming in at number eight, very closely to Die Hard is Lethal Weapon. Two very, very similar films um, in in the fact that they're both 80s action uh, classics. This one is just ahead of Die Hard for me because it's one that I 
I prefer the Lethal Weapon series to the Die Hard series, but also I think Lethal Weapon is, in my opinion, better film than Die Hard. Um, the chemistry between the two leads, Danny Glover and Mel Gibson, is absolutely fantastic. It's a great film. It's funny. It's got brilliant action in it, um, and you know the script was Shane Black, and it was just just a great great film and I love all the other uh, Lethal Weapon films too number 7 is Ghostbusters uh, I again it's another film I've got wonderful memories at the cinema of seeing um, it's just a timeless film that they've been trying to recreate this lightning in a bottle moment with this film ever since in the Ghostbusters franchise uh, they failed on the second film even though that's still very good the reboot they did in 2015, 2016, whenever it was, we won't talk about that. Let's just pray that when the new Ghostbusters film comes out this year, it captures some of that magic. Um, because the original is just a timeless film. It's so much fun. Exceptional casting. Great effects that still stand up today. And it's just bloody good. Coming in at number six. The Thing. Uh, a film I can still consistently watch it's one of those that hasn't aged in my opinion uh, great performances um, the sense of paranoia that it develops in its cast here the film the effects are completely timeless and blows most CGI effects completely out of the water that we see today these practical effects that we got in the thing John Carpenter at his absolute peak he was rarely as good as he was when he directed the thing and he's made a lot of brilliant films John Carpenter Kurt Russell um, arguably his great before greatest performance just a fantastic horror film coming at number five Blade Runner um, this film is in my opinion right up there with the greatest science fiction films ever made um, it, to me I don't think there's a debate on that you know um, it, uh, there's been much said about how it was received when it was first released and yes it was you could, you could consider it a flop it's been rightly regarded as a classic ever since I'm a massive fan of Blade Runner 2049 I thought the sequel was about as perfect as a sequel could be uh, I gave that a 10 out of 10 on the channel when I reviewed it and I just think this film is completely timeless Harrison Ford is brilliant Rutger Hauer is exceptional sci-fi at its best Coming in at number four, The Terminator, the one that started it all, and there is a debate to be had whether there has been any Terminator that's ever got close to this. I think there has. I think Terminator 2 was easily as good as this and possibly even surpassed it. However, that's a debate for maybe another video. Uh, but this film, it's, it's a classic. It's one of those that I used to watch consistently on VHS. Um, I was a huge fan of Arnie in my youth. I still do enjoy watching his films. This was easily one of the best he ever did. Uh, one of the best on-screen villains of all time. A great chase film. Some revolutionary effects at the time. And it's just a damn fine film. And from a damn fine filmmaker in James Cameron. Next on the list is Empire Strikes Back. Many regard this as the best Star Wars film ever made. I'm not really going to argue with that one, but I, for me, how it made me feel in the cinema, the first one takes that prize, the first Star Wars film. This was brilliant at the cinema, I loved it. I always, I also remember being gutted by the ending and how the film finished, knowing that we had another two or three years or four years before we got the next one. Um, I, I remember that as a kid. I was probably on about eight and nine when I first saw this at the cinema. But it's just an exceptional piece of science fiction, a brilliant continuation of the story, and an almost flawless film in many ways. Coming in at number two, Raiders of the Lost Ark. In my opinion, one of the greatest action adventure films that's ever been put to screen. Spielberg and Lucas were trying to recreate that, you know. Um, weekly serial thing like the Flash Gordon thing you used to get on TV we used to watch as kids to try to put it on the big screen and I think they absolutely nailed it um, this is again timeless because of the period it's set in it you can watch it at any time it doesn't feel like it's aged the action is over the top but it's fantastically done great performance by Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones I think the signature character in his career and he's played some brilliant characters 
Um, and again, it's it's flawless, and it's this is another film that's a big part of my childhood. And coming in at number one, and it's my list, so you can't argue, is Predator. Now, I'm I, look. I'm not going to pretend that this is the best film from the 1980s. All I'm saying is this is my favourite film from the 1980s. Um, I remember the first time I saw this, it was on um, a pirate VHS that someone gave me. And VHS in them days was shockingly bad, uh, certainly pirate ones. And then I managed to sneak into a cinema to see it because I wasn't old enough. Um, absolutely loved it. Uh, and I was obsessed with this film for many, many years. It was just perfect. You know, you get to know these characters and then they get killed off and they die and then you get this great alien that we'd never seen on screen before. It was just blew you away, the effects. Uh, you got to see this character of Arnie's that was really macho um, uh, and seemingly invincible, get absolutely battered. I mean, it, it flipped the coin in, in regards to what we'd seen from Arnie before and it was it was quite a brave decision to do the film on his part. But it paid off massively. It's just a crying shame that he has never returned to this franchise. Please, Arnie. Please return to the Predator franchise. Please return as Dutch. We would all love to see it. So that's why I've put it as my number one. Because it, it for, for such a long time, when it's always been in my mind. And someone said, what's, your, what's one of your favourite films of all time? Predator's always jumped almost to the front of the queue. You know what I mean? Along with three, four, five, six others that have been in there. Uh, so that's why I have put it as my number one film. Wow. So there you go, guys. That is my favourite, my top ten favourite films from the 1980s. Uh, really, really tough to do. Uh, when you start doing these lists and you start thinking of your films from that decade and you start researching films from that decade, you know, I found myself literally, oh yeah, there's that, oh yeah, there's that. and I literally, you, you, you get there and you've got, you've got like 30, 35, 40 films and you're like, there's no way I can whittle that down to 10. So it, it's like a real process of elimination and I find when I do that whittling down process, it's usually an emotional thing, you know, um, would I still really enjoy watching the film today? How it made me feel at the time when I saw it for the first time? Um, and it's it's that that's how I tend to do it. I go on emotion about how my films have made me feel, and I think that's generally how top ten lists should be done. It should be a personal thing to you, not what you think should be on a top ten list. Um, so yeah, next coming up when I do another one of these, it will be my top ten films from the 1990s. I'm sure that's going to be in some ways just as difficult. Uh, I obviously would love to hear in the comments what your favourite films from the 1980s are. And obviously I will be back on the channel with more content very, very soon.